next time. On the blue side, Earnshaw, we have TQ up on the top side, Solaris back in the jungle, Jason in the mid lane, Taker in the bot, and Kiwi J on support. Same roster we saw earlier. Uh, interesting to see how they go against another Division 2 well, Division two side. Well, again, coming into this, Earnshaw was the top team in Division 2, which means that, in theory, they should be a step above Mueller, but it's going to be a bit more evenly matched. Speaking of Mueller, it's a whole new lineup for them coming into this second game. We have the King of RC up in the top lane, Legacy 0121 in jungle, Lunartic, not Lunartic, Lunartic 18 in the mid lane, bot lane will be Epsilon Pegasi, and on support, Koizy 212. Yeah. I mean, nice little lineup there from um, Mueller on the red side. Obviously, changing up all their roles. So, they did bring a big squad. I think there's like 13 or 14 of them here uh, from Mueller. So, good to see the school really getting involved and uh, enjoying being here uh, on stage live at the Echo uh, and getting involved here. I mean, I would actually do think Earnside have a very strong chance. And I think, uh, you know, their draft that they had the first game really shows why they're such a strong Division 2 team. I think the biggest weakness uh, with these, you know, younger teams, we now jumping into. Uh, Pick and Ben um, is, you know, Narcissus and Jax are two late game scaling champions. And I think the biggest issue beginners have uh, is actually ending games. So having these late game scaling champions uh, when they're drafting towards them actually gives you that win condition that, you know, no matter how long it takes you to actually end the game, you can get there in the end. Also, uh, two things I want to clear up real quickly. Uh, quick apology to Kuz. It is Kuz. It's not Kuzi. He actually pulled me aside and told him, please don't mess up my name like that. And I immediately messed it up. So... Big well done, apologies Max. there. Uh, it was at the start of the day. It was a long time ago. Also, for those of you at home watching on stream, uh, please take note that the champions that we have read before, they are who are in game. We are not seeing the return of soup time with four anonymous Mueller members. It's UQ, Red 1, 2, 3, and 4. Yeah, that's have you not, not heard of them before? They're that's legendary not players. The it is King of RC, Legacy, Lunatic, Epsilon, Pegasi, and Kuz who are on that. So in our picks and bans at the moment, you can see already a lot of powerful top laner picks taken off the board by Earnshaw. Getting yeah. rid of that Mordkaiser, getting rid of that Aatrox. We're in response. Talon has been banned away, and already Mueller is a team after my heart. Why is that? I hate Talon. Why do you hate Talon? He's a great he, he, parkour, man. Parkour. It, yeah, which was like parkour. Well, po popular like five years ago, right? Yeah, exactly, but it's still yeah. popular now because it's a great meme. It's not very stale. Unlike very stale meme. That was last game. I can still make the pun. I, I suppose I can you can, but you're, you're a little late on that one. Uh, more bans coming through. Finally, no Zoe's being played, as Zoe has been banned out by Finally. Earnshaw, as we also see a Kha'Zix ban and a Caitlyn ban. I feel as if Mueller has been, you know, but watching More sparkles, man. More sparkles. I need my Zoe. But Renekton here, hovered by Tiki, very opposite to the Renekton. Literally the exact opposite, right? Both Shireem and Gods, but uh, one of them, the late game scaling monster, and the other one, a lane dominant... Uh, Destroyer and Renekton's looking here as a first pick. An interesting first pick blind. Obviously, uh, not one of those champions who you'd usually blind pick. Uh, a lot of counters available. Uh, you know, like a lot of counters available. Renekton is quite strong though. And the tri oh sorry, the Trinity that's been banned all three games uh, so far is finally allowed through. And we'll see exactly what's going to happen uh, on Mueller with this Trinity. Yeah, I'm excited to see why exactly Trindamir has been taken away in the ban phase so many times today. I'm curious how we'll go up against a Renekton as well, just because I associate Renekton as kind of being one of those premier top laners, especially yeah. in competitive play. So Trindamir, I haven't seen too much about, and ooh, Master Yi locked in for Mueller as well. I mean, Master Yi definitely, uh, Dunk Master Yi, now watch that video, I understand the reference. And Solaris back on his jacks again. I love this pick from Solaris. They also said the biggest weakness against picking E, especially if the Jax is up, is Jax hard counters Master Yi. Uh, simply because the second you pop that counter strike, Yi does no damage to you outside of his Q, which isn't really a lot. I mean, he does a little bit more than he got buffed that kind of has the Kha'Zix isolation buff on it. But yeah, literally the Yi does no, no damage with his auto, so gets no real benefit out of his R or his E, uh, especially now there's no passive. Uh, on the east, only an active now, so uh, you lose quite a lot from there. And Jason locking in the Yasuo as well, looks like he'll be taking this game uh, a little bit more spicy. In the middle. I mean, this game is already looking very solo queue, for lack of better words. So many Blade Masters in this one. Your Yi, Trindamir, Yasuo, Renekton. Blade Masters. Yeah, they would be Blade Masters. You reckon? Oh, you reckon would be a uh, 100 would be, be a Blade Master. Yeah. As we're seeing Annie locked in, so a bit of variety somewhere in Korea. LS is looking on proud at these beginner teams taking that Annie. Ooh. Hopefully it will be run mid lane, though, and not support as we move into our next round of bans. Olaf taking I mean, away a bit surprising. I very interesting about League of Legends ban, but I want to rewind. What do you think Jax's other thing would be in TNT besides Blade Master? Would he void? Oh, no, he wouldn't be Blade Master. 
You don't think Jax would be no, a brawler? No, Jax would be a brawler. Jax would be a brawler. But he's like the ultimate uh, master of, of all weapons, right? That's his thing, right? Blade True. Master. He's, I mean, he has a lamp post, but still Blade I Master. I think he'd right? be. Well, no, Staff Master. Blade Masters are literally blades. Like, they're all yeah, sorty, maybe, maybe, maybe. sorty dudes. Um, also, oh, Jax is not Void. I don't know where he's from, but well, he's. Because he's, he's from um, Akathia. So, like, yeah. the bottom of Shreem or the Akathia's is the only thing, and Akathia's where the Void, the big Void will happen. So, yeah, 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 it could be Void. Could be. I mean, he's also a sand troll. Yeah. So maybe they move, they put Trundle in, and then even the trolls or something. I don't know. I don't know where Jax would fit. I'd, I'd almost say uh, Noble. Noble. Yeah, noble, maybe. really? Yeah, maybe. I mean, uh, no, because Noble's Demacia. So yeah. Never mind. That doesn't work. I don't know. I don't know what Jax. I don't think Jax belongs on TFT. That's you know, a so? quick solution. Yeah, just just, just don't bother. No, 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 Jax and TFT. But back to actual League of Legends. Uh, Olaf of Morgana. Lux and a no ban from Earnshaw as well coming through. Tristana, look at these beginner champions all being locked in on the side of Muller. Uh, Mueller, sorry. Uh, you know, very simple to play champions. And on the opposite on Earnshaw, we've got all these high skill cap champions. Yasuo. Jax is kind of not really. I mean, there's this mechanic max you can do on him, but not a lot. Or Necton, a very aggressive. I need to learn the champion on Ezreal. Uh, only skill shots, pretty much. So, uh, very much difficult to play champions. And Blitzcrank as well will be the last lock-in. Oh, I love the Blitz. Excited to see some of those rocket grabs come through. And you, you're saying all these simple champions, and then I see a zillion get locked in last. So, there is some variety there for Mueller. I'm a little disappointed that we're not seeing that sort of counter-engage uh, champion as well. Especially because Nautilus was still available. I feel yeah. Nautilus would have been very good, actually, for the Mueller team comp. Instead, opting for the Zillion. So, I mean, Zillion's fine, actually, especially with the Master Yi, especially with the Tristana as well. Yeah. Being able to sort of chrono shift and bring them back, I think, would be fantastic. Mm. But, at the same time, when I look at Earnshaw's team comp, honestly, it looks a bit more what I would expect from these teams. Yes, yeah. Mueller is a lot of simple, easy to execute champions, but Earnshaw is pretty similar in that sense, but I feel stronger. Yeah, I agree. I think I've definitely got a little bit more variety, a little bit more, um, not just simple. I mean, look, actually the lane matchups for Mueller aren't too bad. Uh, Zillion Tristana matches up well into Blitzcrank, uh, uh, right. as well, especially post six, right? Because you have the Blitz, uh, the uh, ability to Zillion onto whoever Blitz hooks. Uh, you've also got Tristana uh, jump to buffer the CC uh, in the mid lane. Annie is a very good counter to Yasuo, uh, since your your W uh, isn't actually blocked by Windmore, so you can stun him through the Windmore once you get that up. Uh, well, you know, one of those very traditional counters, Yasuo, probably not as good because Yasuo is kind of uh, can outmaneuver you. Uh, obviously, in the jungle, you've got the matchup that does actually favor uh, Earnside here with Jax, uh, one of the hardest counters to Master Yi because he scales very well, uh, it blocks all of the damage that Yi can do with auto attacks, uh, and also has um, fantastic dueling early on. So, pretty much all stages of the game, uh, Solaris wins. But I think he definitely plays that more passive style, which allows you to get maybe some ganks off level 6 and can maybe let Mueller get a little bit further ahead. And up in that top side, Renekton uh, does... I mean, without TP, kind of struggles a little bit against the Trinity, who has a little bit more sustain. Interesting that King of RC is going to electrocute. Uh, that's a little bit more interesting. I think the runes in general uh, for Mueller are a little bit less uh, orthodox. Mm. Uh, you could say Grasp on Yi is definitely not something you see every day. Um, yeah, generally, it's more like a one. Conqueror or a Lethal Tempo or Press the Attack. Uh, any of those, depending on what kind of uh, early game comp you want to go for. Um, we've got a Boot Start as well on the support. So, no support item for Zillion. Uh, I wonder if we'll be sharing Farm with Tristana or exactly what's going to go down in that bot lane. Um, but, I mean, this is kind of some of the things you see in these Division 2 brackets. Obviously, yes. these are players who are learning the game. They don't know a lot about it. They don't even figured out the quirks. Um, I mean, you can see in the summoner spells, it's obviously runes we're talking about, and you know, starting items are very much, uh, you know, less uh, commonly known between these younger players, and they, you know, need to learn and then play the game more. Like I mean, like I didn't really know anything until I hit like level 30, 40. Like you don't really. Uh, League of Legends is one of those games where people say, "Hey, can you teach me about this game? Can you tell me about League of Legends?" Kind of like, I don't know where to start because it's just so much information and so much uh, learning and breadth to the game that. Unless you put maybe two, 200, 250 hours of play into the game where you can really start understanding the game, even at the basic level. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of looking at it. And that's probably the more correct way of looking at things. But I also see it as a case of, you know, let's redefine the meta. Maybe this is exactly what they want us to think. Oh, I don't know necessarily what might be considered most optimal, but I'm going to mix things up. I'm going to take these boots, and with this movement speed, maybe I'm going to roam mid. Maybe I'm going to make a play, you know, in an elsewhere, in a different lane. As already, we can take a look at, you know, both junglers sort of 
getting a bit of an invade happening right off the bat. So Solaris feeling very aggressive, but he will get walked in on. They will collide in that bush, and Legacy kind of walked right past Solaris before trying to turn it around, and then flashes away. Follow-up flash from Solaris is there, cannot connect with the Counter-Strike, so... Uh, odd interaction between the junglers. I like to think Solaris came out on top, but I'm actually not quite sure. I mean, he's invading the jungle, taking it away from Yen. I don't think he's going to counter invade, but he's also just burnt a flash for nothing. Um, and, and the counter strike as well, the timing on that was a little bit uh, mistimed, per se. I mean, good to hold it for after the EQ, but I think another very interesting thing in this mid lane is that uh, Annie actually went and leashed the Yi on the blue, which is definitely unorthodox. Mm -hmm. um, and it means Yasuo got a little extra lane priority and got a free lane of uh, a, a free wave to shove in. You see this huge slow push they being built back because Yasuo unfortunately was not able to clear out that first wave in time. And as a result, two waves stacked up and we'll be collecting a little bit of CS, but has missed a fair bit though on the Yasuo. Uh, which is interesting given the E makes it very easy to farm on that champion. Yeah, you say that, yet also if I were playing Yasuo right now, I'd be looking very similar to Jason. I cannot. Really? I, I just like at farming in general, as we're seeing <laughs> uh, TQ already flashing in, looking for that kill. First blood secured by Earnshaw. Yeah, that's a little bit of King of RC stepping up a little bit too far. Not respecting that Ignite up in the top side. I don't know the amount of times I've been killed by a top laner where I go in for a trade and go, oh, I win this trade. Oh, wait, he has Ignite. Ah, well then, I guess I'm dead. Um, very much... Uh, one of those, uh, I mean, I get frustrated at it because I'm very much a more traditionalist kind of uh -oh. player. We see a great gank coming Yeah, in. a bit of trouble right now for Lunatic. Has to try and flash away defensively, but gets cut down already. Two kills in favor of the blue side in this one, and Earnshaw's off to a very fast start. A very fast start. A very explosive start. These players not even f are being afraid to burn these summoner spells. Flashing in from the Yasuo to uh, get that kill on the, uh, Ooh, on the Annie there. Gank in, the in mid lane. That is an Alpha Strike already used onto Jason, but it's a very healthy Yasuo, so Legacy cannot do much, especially being still at level 2. Does not want this fight at all. Uh, interesting win wall there from the Yasuo blocking out the Yi. Uh, <laughs> not sure what ability. Oh, here we go. Solaris jumping in as well onto Epsilon. Not going to find the Counter-Strike connecting right there. And I'm liking the aggression from both these sides in this game. Oh, it's very explosive. It's, it's, it's a fun. very exciting. It's, fun to watch. it's a fun game. It's an exciting game. Both these players just burning everything, just uh, throwing everything at each other early on, having no regard for uh, scaling time or anything like that, which no is great flash. to watch. It's so much no fun. No flash available for Tech Q, and Legacy is here. He's going to try and escape through the jungle using both of those lunges. A flash forward by King of RC does mean Tech Q has to go deeper into the jungle. No roam from Lunatic, however, means that Renekton might actually be able to escape. King of RC back on him, and here comes the turnaround from Tech Q. King of RC trying to back away as the Alpha Strike does come through for Legacy. Where is Lunatic? This fight is happening right under his nose, and it looks like Tech you might actually get away. He's looking to turn it back around onto King of RC, as it appears as if Legacy has backed off from the fight as well. Finally, the Master Yi is stepping back forward, walking right into a stun, and Tech is turning around. Here comes Jason from below. They have two members. They don't need two members. <laughs> Tech you gets the solo kill. What an exciting game this is. <laughs> I, don't I, mean, know. I mean, I mean, I can't even break that down. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> I mean, it's Earnshaw being more aware of the map yeah, and what is so. happening. The communication was better on the blue side than it was on the red side, unfortunately yeah. for Mueller. Lunatic, all he had to do was step up, and that could have been a kill. But instead, Lunatic's actually getting jumped on by Jason. Not looking for that engage, but yeah, Earnshot playing a bit more like a team at this stage as we're seeing aggressive play from Tekker down in the bot lane, getting punished a bit by Epsilon, who steps right into the rocket crab. Kuz was walking back, so no help from the Zillion means Flash is burned out of this Tristana. Yeah, Flash being burned there to get away, even though the... Yeah, Blitzcrank used his uh, knock-up on the minion. Oh, oh, the all-in from Jason's coming through. Wind wall is thrown down. Doesn't block anything. Doesn't need to. Another solo kill for Earnshaw. Yeah, again, up in that mid lane. Unfortunately, using that last breath a little bit early, you had to take a tower shot or two there on the Yasuo, but... Uh, that's exactly what you need to experimenting learning, but great aggression here out of the Yasuo, learning uh, how to use his champion to the best of his ability and really uh, playing very aggressively, getting a solo kill onto this Annie in the counter matchup. So great play coming out of Earnshaw so far. 4-0 up, 2.4k goal in the lead. And I swear they're Division 2 leaders. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely looking at it right now. We are seeing completed boots, though, coming out of the Zillion. So I, I yeah, want boys. to see some roams. Rushing I want pen, to see maybe. some. I want to see it actually put into use. If you're going to opt for boots as opposed to a traditional support item, make it work. And you know, 
I'll be happy with it. That said, though, Tekyu feeling very confident just walking right underneath that tower to get some hits and trade. Has to be a bit careful, though, because Legacy, once again, is coming to that top lane. But there's really not a lot of support from King of RC right now. Tekyu happy to try and turn this around. The Ignite has been dropped, and the stun blocks the meditation. Legacy will be able to walk away, but King of RC is the one who is in trouble. In the end, Tekyu's not going to pursue it, but two versus one going in favor of the Alligator. Yeah, I mean, the Renekton up in the top side, I mean, using that fantastically. I feel like Legacy, he just really needs to go and farm, man. He's level 4 in Master Yu, who's um, probably one of the worst junglers pre-6. You really need to use that, uh, you really need the Highlander to get him with the speed. I mean, I know, Yu was actually the first champion I ever played in League of Legends. Oh, oh another all-in coming from Jason. He is ulting on cooldown. Meanwhile, up top, there was a kill as well. So two more on the board for Earnshaw. And this is, like, starting to turn into a real massacre here. Yeah, this is a bit of a mask here from Earnshaw, getting quite far ahead. Uh, Yasuo rushing Hex Drinker uh, into the Annie as well, despite being ahead in lane. is interesting to see him, you know, obviously thinking about the matchup that he's in, but uh, maybe not knowing how strong he actually is and knowing that he could probably just go for those attacks he boots straight away. And uh, given the fact that Annie's only 22 CS, not posing a lot of threat to him is a little bit... I mean, good to see, obviously, he's thinking about it and thinking, you know, I should do this item if beats this champion, but... Uh, it's that next step of, you know, as these players get better and better learning about exactly what they can do. I mean, I know I personally would have gone for my attack speed boots probably into Zeal if I was this far ahead. Um, obviously, it's, it's about learning right in and giving these players advice and, you know, helping them to get better. So, no ill feelings. It's just about uh, learning the game. And obviously, that's what Division 2 is about. Yeah, getting involved, getting these players to play the game and, and kind of learn a little bit uh, what to do uh, as they move up in their League of Legends careers. Yeah, I mean, Earnshaw in this one definitely looking a cut above, at least so far. Granted, we're still early days in this one, but when you're taking a look at the CS scores down the board, it is all in favor of the blue side. Unfortunately, yeah. King of RC, Legacy, Lunartic, all of them have just been struggling to really get that farm in. And when you're unable to farm, that means you're not getting that income, which means that you're going to be power spiking very late into the game. Yeah. And for Earnshaw, they really can just, at this stage, like already I feel like they can start playing super aggressive, get those deep rewards in, start forcing plays because... They are in complete control. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is for Earnshaw as well, right? Uh, I feel like their comp is just better at all stages of the game now that they're a little bit ahead of Mueller. Uh, they have the better late game uh, due to the, the Yasuo and, of course, the, the Jax as well, right? Yeah. Uh, Marcy and Tristan are great late game carries, but against a Jax with Counter-Strike, kind of negates all that AD damage that's coming straight through. And Annie, as you get late into the game, is you know, very easy to counter her and gauge. Sure, uh, she's a good champion to play early on, but uh, definitely struggles with that agency if her flash is enough, if her Predator is enough, but she hasn't actually even have this game and she doesn't have those ways to start those fights with Tibbers um, and really look for oh. those big engages and I mean Renekton does fall off a little bit right you can see this Trendomir can maybe win the side lane but yeah. uh, even then Jax is going to be strong anyway to see a Ooh. nice invader to Legacy. Yeah Flash burned out of Legacy who does not have ultimate but it doesn't look like Solaris even cares going ahead and chasing Legacy all the way back to the tower. Lunartic in trouble as well he has a stun but doesn't use it Jason again finding that solo kill in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, Jason there again using this Yasuo to advantage. I mean, when you get this far ahead on Yasuo, it's very easy to think. I would like to see last next time. Uh, oh, here we go. Another yeah, this could side. be a... Oh, his ultimate, though. No, ultimate's oh, been, like been burned. Yeah, yeah, King of RC did not have his ultimate available. So, scary situation for the yeah. Trindamir. Really a scary situation for the entire Mueller side at the moment as they're just falling further and further behind. The only lane going in their favor has been this bot lane. Yeah. In fact, they have a CS lead down bot. No kills yet. Maybe they can start playing around there. Yeah, maybe. Especially uh, uh, this Tristana as well. You know, one of those late game tarries. 68 CS, so she'd have enough for a BF Sword and, and even a Zeal as well, actually, at this point. Uh, unfortunately, QBJ missing hooks. Uh, not getting that one. I mean, I would like to see JT only next time he goes for an ultimate. It's a very um, you know important thing on Yasuo, or if you know who Mo is, or Yasuo is one of the most famous Yasuo one tricks. Uh, oh on boy, here we go again! Another gank attack, Counter Strike not going to hit. Yeah, good flash out of there by Unit Lunatics. Won't have it up next time, but and the next time Yasuo goes for this last breath, it's really important you get an extra auto and then an E in before you actually use that last breath. Uh, you can get a lot more damage out that way, and you don't actually realize the difference between one extra auto attack plus that last breath because of the armor shred it gives you, right? Uh, giving that extra auto it means, you know, it's an extra, especially on Yasuo, who's an AD champion and, you know, scales with crit, that means oh. you're getting an extra damage, and means that, you know, there's a couple times in this, uh, in this instance, obviously, he hasn't actually really had to deal with it too much because uh, he's been able to chase down the Annie, but, uh, you know, an extra auto adds, you know, 300 damage, which means that's one less uh, auto you have to catch up on, and especially in range versus melee when the flash is up. Means a little bit less of a dash, and uh, hopefully next time when Jason goes to that pay, he can listen and, and go for that extra auto attack, which is very essential in the Yasuo. 
I love how Treku just does not care at all. Yeah. He was sitting there whacking at that tower. King of RC, Stedford, trying to contest and push him back. Renekton doesn't. He, he just sat there, took the abuse, got those tower hits. This is just a massacre up in the top lane. It's a massacre in mid lane. Earnshaw looking so, so strong in this one. You can see some more items being completed. Yasuo, after getting that Hex Drinker, opting to go for the Zeal, starting to build a bit more conventionally. Renekton getting ever closer to that Black Cleaver as well. Has the Tiamat to help with the wave clear, so the split push threat is for real up yeah. top. Just all Earnshaw is... Oh no, Lunatic walks right into that one. Jason's going to find yet another. This Yasuo is on a rampage. Yasuo, four and out to Fed Yasuo. I mean, I would love to see he come Flash. Whoa. Right. Yeah, Treku, though, he can chase him down. The ultimate is available for King of RC, just has to use it correctly. No damage is being thrown back onto Treku, but help is arriving in the form of Legacy. Flash has been used, and finally the ultimate comes out for Trindamir, but it may have been a bit premature because now Legacy is on his own. A 2v1 situation, Treku's going to try and turn it back. He has that lifesteal, he has the damage as well. Finds one, Jason flashing in, trying to find the second, not going to come through, but down bot. There was another kill picked up by Taker as well. Earnshaw now up 10 to 0. Yeah, the Zillion goes down with just the boots and flashes everywhere, man. These players, they're definitely just keen to hit that flash key as soon as they possibly can. My god. Uh, GA Rush as well on the Tristano is very interesting to be surviving a little bit more in these fights. Uh, I mean, if it's TFT, man, that's a, that's the most OP Ooh. item in the game. God Ooh. damn. Maybe not in Tristano. You were on a cannon. Uh, yeah, no, but, but I mean, or, or hey, Tristana well. works. I hey, mean, Tristana works as well, yeah, of course. What I'm thinking right now is this like TFT, where if Tristana does fall, comes back with like a now, you know, three levels up. Will that will that be the case? Did they did remove that, didn't they? Oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Hey, basically, the, the advantage of GA and TFT, I mean, you would know, right? You're the yeah. platinum ranked player. Uh, <laughs> versus me. I'm just, I'm just a simply, I'm a simple bronze yeah. in TFT. But obviously, the advantage is that you guarantee your ultimate coming off that unit. So your Karthus, your, your your cannon, your, these really essential ultimates. Morgana, uh, like Morgana as well, yeah. These really essential ultimates Aatrox. you need. Aatrox. Aatrox is fantastic. Oh, I thought, you go, I thought you, Aatrox is like Yumi, Dragon's Claw, and uh, um, GA. Uh, both that stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, it I doesn't mean, matter. It's just last item. Yeah, it's like the third item. It's not, it usually doesn't matter. Uh, have you seen the new the rune? New rune ends is nuts. No, I haven't Blade seen it Master? yet. Blade Master? I haven't seen it Gives yet. Gives Draven 2.45 attack speed. That's ridiculous. Meanwhile, though, back to the game at hand. A bit of a play, perhaps, could be happening down bot at the moment. As you can see, you know, Epsilon tried to get that cutoff onto Taker, but couldn't find it. Meanwhile, in mid lane, the tower dive is on. Lunatic trying to defend with the help of Timbers, but can't really do too much. The tower and the Annie each fall. 11 kills now for Earnshaw. Yeah, Earnshaw now 11 and 0. Almost a perfect game coming up from there. Dragon picked up, no towers yet. It could be that perfect game they're looking for. Uh, a perfect game in League of Legends, of course, is when you give literally nothing. Uh, zero, sorry, zero tower plates, zero objectives, uh, zero kills, and you choke your opponent out. And it's very rare occurrence. I don't think it's happened. I think it's only happened once or twice on a professional stage. Yeah, it, it is. I think SKT did it thing. once against. Uh, it happened. Gamma. Gamma. I, I, I think I remember it happening in the CLG once as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it's CLG, of course it does. CLG, but, TSM, Lamel. Yeah, something like that. However, in this situation, though, we are still a long way from this game ending, but. Earnshaw definitely making it look very easy, at least at the moment. They'll be able to pick up this Rift Herald and really put more pressure on one of these lanes. King of RC did take advantage of the situation, did crash a wave into the tower, but not enough to even bring it close to coming down, and now is in trouble from that counter gank. Tech you gets the stun, the follow-up counter strike is there, as well as King RC uses the ultimate, trying to buy time, but no flash available means he should get run down. Tech you gets that kill. Yeah, TQ up in that top lane. This Renekton's huge. 5-0, and zero, Black Pivot completed uh, versus almost a static shift. Not even done yet. Uh, here on the uh, Trinimir, Yasuo as well, finishing static shift. One of his strongest items once he gets that going, uh, especially in combination with those Ataxi boots. When the IE comes in third as well, Jason is going to be uh, one of the strongest uh, members in the game. A lot of AD damage, though, uh, coming from Earnshaw. And then, you know, Mule will start buying this armor like Tristana. Uh, on this GA, eventually it could potentially... Oh, hook. that rocket grab was fantastic. Epsilon, though, with the rocket jump, is able to escape. Meanwhile, up top, once again, Legacy trying to fight against TechU. And this is a common mistake I see with um, some lower-level teams in games. Instead of trying to accelerate your lanes that might win, you try and do damage control and protect your losing lanes. 
But at this stage, it's too far gone up yeah. top. Legacy would be much better off trying to help this bot lane. Yeah, of course. You know, he's still got a CS lead down the bot side. You went down to one kill. It's one of those things where across the map, when you're falling behind, it's much harder to kind of spread your lead and look after them. Oh, Lunar Tick is just getting three man in mid lane. Another easy kill picked up for Earnshaw, their 13th of the game. The sixth on Tekyu, and it's just... It, it just keeps piling on right now. Yeah, it does. You know, five zero on this Yasuo, ninety two CS at seventeen minutes. I mean, a little bit strong. I mean, thirty three CS in this Annie. I mean, we talked about Flame Horizons last game. There's like three potential Flame Horizons that could happen in right now. Jungle. I mean, Jax is almost done, right? In uh, the seventeen minutes. Jungle. I have. I there don't go. think There's I've a seen, done. I don't think I've ever seen a Flame Horizon before in the jungle, and oh, that is just credit to Solaris and how well he has been playing this game. I yeah. mean. From the very start of the game, Solaris was willing to invade, willing to contest everything, and it has been paying in dividends at the moment. A huge lead for Earnshaw, over 1k, and oh, sorry, over 10k yeah, at in 20 minutes. minutes in. Like, that's quite significant, and yeah. they still have a Rift Herald to drop as well. This is going to be a very quick one. I mean, you'd think so, but... If, if playing in bronze has taught me anything, you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Kids, it's, anything is possible. Especially when you're dealing with, you know, a Master Yi and a Trindomir. Yep, anything is possible. Baron is one of those uh, objectives in the game that uh, funny things happen when you see the big purple worm. It comes up on the map and, and people make, make uh, choices. Uh, it might be correct choices, it might be incorrect choices, but at the end of the day, the choices end up taking the game to 50 minutes when it should have been over in 15. So we'll have to see. Exactly what happens as this game transpires. Preemptive, I'm sorry, by the way. <laughs> because um, the big purple worm was something I picked up from another caster. And then I started saying it, and now you've started saying it. So oh, no. it's kind of been passed along. So, oh, no. Mm, um, I, I, it, something about that bothers me, the big purple worm. It's almost dead. Yeah, hey, I mean, I picked it up from OCS caster, so I'll copy oh, that. Okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> so did I. There you go. <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 it's the pass. It's the team. It's, 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 it's how it's passing the torch, as they say. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, the big purple worm is referenced to Baron Nasher, the giant uh, sort of dragon looking thing that spawns at 20 minutes on the map. That if a team takes, they get a huge advantage. Meanwhile, Tech U in a 1v3 under the tower does find the kill, but can he escape? It looks like this could be the end of that perfect game, but he's turning it back around. King RC is in fight low. He has the double, jumping onto Kuz. He's looking for the triple, but no, gets shot. Shut down in the end. Meanwhile, Solaris going duper deep is trying to pop that GA, gets it, and will have to back off. But the perfect game is gone. Yeah, unfortunately, Renekton, I mean, so strong. Obviously, he got the big buff uh, two patches ago with his healing on his Q, gives him uh, 45, oh, you know, 55 percent of damage dealt uh, back as HP. Uh, there, so you can see why he's getting so much health back. Got the Shojin now completed now uh, on that back, which gives his abilities a uh, what a 20 percent? No. 80% uh, cooldown on each auto attack, so that kill will be up a lot more. So maybe next time if you had that Shojin, he wouldn't have actually lost that. He would have definitely won the one before. Mm -hmm. um, very strong. Very strong. Very relation. strong. I mean, especially 8-1. Uh, two items to one. It's uh, kind of one of those situations where there's not much the enemy team can do. I'm trying to pick up what that instrument is. Because we are starting to hear another instrument yet again. It's, it's not as loud no. as the violin was. Like, that violin was amazing. Uh, referencing game number two. Uh, if you want to go back and watch that on the Is VOD. piano? Like, Might have been piano. I, it feels like every yeah. game we're getting another instrument. And I'm we're getting the full orchestra going. You know, it almost sounds like a violin. flute. It almost flute? sounds like a could flute. could be a flute. Yeah, nice. Get the wind going. Wind, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. We've had the string instruments. Now it's time for the wind. I mean, next is a percussion. I don't know. That. Oh, Max. That's beautiful. That, that, isn't that the sound? I don't know. Anyways, back. Uh, sorry about that little distraction. I'm getting distracted by because we're at the Echo, right? Yeah, of course. So there's, there's so much on. happening all around us. For those of you who are thinking about whether or not to come to the Echo this year, 100% recommended. Especially if you can't make it today, this weekend we will be back as yeah. well to be casting more games. So hey, come on down Saturday, Sunday. Come check us out here at you know the esports section of the Echo. Meanwhile, Baron has been started. Legacy actually is thinking about the steal. He has vision for it, but a huge knockup out of Jason sort of stops that before it even starts. Baron now picked up by Earnshaw. It looks like they can start to end this game. Super Minions already in the base. Mueller, do they have that miracle in them? I mean, I'm pretty sure Earnshaw can just walk down mid as five here and just end the game with the Super Minions. I don't think uh, Mueller has the damage on any of their carries. Of course, Annie here, 38 CS, 0 and 8 has... You know, no gold. Uh, Tristana, only a GA. He's not going to be able to clear out these 
uh, super minions at all. I think they're going to really struggle to take down those uh, 2,000 with Baron buff minions. And I think, uh, honestly, Entro can kind of just sit back and let this super just end the game for them. That might be <laughs> what happens. Jason right now is the one who's trying to escort those minions into the base, has backup in the forms of Taker and Kiwi J. But until Solaris and TechQ arrive, I don't see Earnshaw pulling the trigger just yet. It appears as if Solaris is going to be escorting top. Uh, meanwhile, down below, it is actually a bit of a reset for TechQ. Went ahead and finished those Ninja Tab Eyes and got a Ruby Crystal as well. So even more damage and sustain actually coming out of TechQ come this next fight. Another inhibitor should go down. It's not even going to be contested by Mueller as the siege has been set. Now, how many men is Yasuo going to go in on the ultimate? Uh, however many they get. Big hook connected with King RC. And just like that, Tryndamere is gone. No time to even use his ultimate as Jason is diving underneath that tower. Out comes Sibbers. They're trying to throw it back the other way. That is Jason on the run, but down the middle comes Taker. And he is finding a few kills. A huge shutdown for Epsilon before falling himself. But it's still four for one. And with that, Earnshaw should be able to end this game. This poor Zillion on his own can't do much. A quadra kill for Solaris and Earnshaw win game four. Damn, I mean, that was just a complete demolish of uh, <laughs> of Mueller there from Earnshaw. I mean, like, god damn. That, 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 I mean, I think definitely I'd have to give my MVP to TQ up on the top side yep. on the Renekton. Uh, obviously, he got a little bit over aggressive and gave away the perfect game, but. Uh, at the end of the day... He did it in style, though. Yeah, he, he did it on one before, he, he which took, he killed two of them. So he almost he, did very he was well. one ability away from getting that yeah. one before Quadra kill. So definitely Tekyu on that Renekton looked nigh unstoppable. A fantastic effort from him as, once again, sportsmanship, very important. Very good to see both teams shaking hands, saying, job well done. I'm sure fun was had on this rift. If we're going to look for the ace, though, the best on Team Mueller... Who are you looking at in that one? I'd say the Tristana. I think the, the, the AD carrier is probably the best performer. I obviously had a CS lead in lane. Uh, item build, uh, you know, TFT. Very TFT. Yeah. But, uh, you know, still overall, I think across the map, you can see that in beginner player, I think it definitely has potential and looked very good on the Tristana and, and was obviously trying their best and, and playing really well. So I think uh, you, don't have, you can't really fault them for that, but uh, that brings our fourth game to an end.